Okay, so here we go. And um, well, just really quickly reminder, remind you that there's uh, two types of projects. There's the inquiry-based project, where it's a science experiment. Um, and let me see. A science experiment uh, with the, the hypothesis and um, experiment and conclusions. And then there's the engineering design project, which is either a new innovation or a new invention or an upgrade or uh, to a current design, just to make sure we go through that. And, and wanted to remind you about the design processes. They're very similar. If you're doing an engineering process or a scientific method where you create the, the initial thoughts, you do some research, then you establish where we are today, your hypothesis or your design criteria. And so let's talk about some hypothesis examples. So remind everybody of what uh, the format of a hypothesis is. It's remember, it's an if, and then you have a cause or an independent variable, then what the effect is on your dependent variable, and then because, which is the basic, the principle of science that you're testing. So these are actual, um, so we're gonna go through some, these are actual items that have been turned into, what we used to have was um, a workshop where people turned in their hypothesis or design statements and then we improved on them for their uh, project. So these are real turned in ones. So we'll start with an example. An example one is if a hydrogen peroxide is applied to a hydroponically grown beans, of course that's water grown instead of uh, soil grown, then germin germination and plant growth rate will be greater in the hydroponic system. And the because is because it strengthens the plants and kills pathogens and bacteria. So this is, so what the, what the of course what the, um, the hypothesis is, is that if I add hydrogen peroxide to the water in my hydroponic system, then that will um, strengthen the plants. So um, a couple things that this is an interesting project, uh, you know, for growing plants. Lots of people are doing um, hydroponic systems to grow plants because there's lots to learn about it. But about adding um, uh, hydroponic uh, or hydrogen peroxide, there are good bacteria in the soil. Right, so you have to be careful. So yeah, you see, you could kill pathogens and bacteria, but you would, before you would want to do that, you would want to make sure that you're not killing the good bacteria too. So, so it's just a little bit of research, but just to keep that in mind. Um, otherwise, it's a pretty good um, idea. Let's go to example two. Here's one. I get lots, we get lots of these things uh, that help to study concentration, right? So if I play music, then people will type faster and more accurately because there's a neuropsychological link between music and the brain and I'm testing to see if that link affects productivity and if so, how. Okay, so here's the problem with this one. So uh, uh, there's the thing that's important and we talked about this last time is that you only change one variable at a time and you keep everything else constant. So the thing about um, people being able to type faster right? How will you be able to test whether they're typing faster? What's their regular rate? Is it because they got tired today or maybe they're sleepy or they have an injury on their hand, right? So there's so many variables that you just cannot, um, cannot uh, uh, keep track of or keep in, in control. And then of course, it's very difficult to find out what faster means. Faster is a very and what ac more accurately, that's also a very vague term and very difficult to test. And it's very important in a science project that you have data and um, typing faster is difficult to, um, to measure. So I would not recommend this one. Example three, if natural buffers are placed in clay soil, then plants will grow the best during prolonged acid rain conditions because buffers help to prevent pH changes in the soil that would affect plant nutrient absorption. Okay, so, so uh, they're not talking about what buffers are, right? Maybe that's um, charcoal or something that would help uh, uh, um, regulate pH. But um, the thing that's difficult is what is prolonged acid rain? And how will you be able to um, uh, create that? 
right? So you say before, this is what the plant is before acid rain, and this is what a plant is after acid rain. And so how would you be able to create that? So it's very difficult to um, prove this hypothesis. And you would need to say, um, you would need to define, um, you know, uh, what acid rain is. Is that just spraying chemicals on your plants, right? So that's a very difficult, it's a very interesting topic, but again, I'm not, this is one that I wouldn't recommend. Let's go to number four. If Pratt truss is a, used on a model bridge, and that's of course a structure on a bridge, then it will have better efficiency weight held versus over mass when tested with a single centralized weight in the middle, because the truss will distribute the weight better throughout the whole bridge. Now, one, pro one type of project that's always a good project is one where you're studying forces. And we'll see that in the examples. It's always an easy thing to study forces. You can change forces, you can balance forces and stuff like that. So bridges are very interesting um, uh, in, in their analysis of trusses. So you can, um, so I would say that, uh, of course, you're, you're sticking with one single truss, truss uh, model bridge um, and um, with the weight but you're not changing anything, right? So you're gonna have different types of bridges, different size of bridges. So um, forces are good. This one has, you're not changing an independent variable, so it's difficult to measure a dependent variable. So, so again, some, some tweaking, but uh, trusses, forces is a good one. So here's one. Example number five. If a nail is set up three inches away from a magnet, then adding weights to the nail will stop the nail from going to the magnet because forces on each side of the nail will be balanced. So again, force um, projects are um, always good projects for balancing, right? So, um, and, and you're using things that are easy to measure. Weights, right? So you're adding weight, you have the weight of the nail, stuff like that, the amount of time it takes to move the nail. So these are all very measurable and you're doing forces. So this would be a project that you could use with a magnet. Of course, you would have to keep things constant, the distance from the magnet when you're starting, right? So, um, but otherwise, forces, again, is a good one. So I'm going to start reading these, and then I'm going to ask you uh, if you would like to um, uh, give me some uh, um, reasons why one or another is not very good. And maybe I'll do one more. They, this one's funny. So if bananas are allowed to ripen over time, then the sugar content will increase over time because fruit ripens, uh, as fruit ripens, the enzyme elise may, uh, which is uh, present due to ethylene, ethyl, sorry, ethylene production, accelerates hydrolysis of starch into sugar, which can be measured by using a refractometer, okay? So, so you're gonna be able to measure the sugar constant content with a refractor meter, which is good. Um, you can always use time as your independent variable, which is good. So your time um, with uh, the sugar content increasing over time. So this is a, a good project. Any comments? Or should we go to the next one and I'll let you comment on the next one. You can put comments in the chat box too, if you wanna do that, that's fine. Okay, so we're just kind of running through that. Here's another one. So. We have lots of projects where people are doing what I would call behavioral science studies. I don't necessarily recommend them, uh, particularly nowadays during the age of COVID, since you're not going to be able to get with them. But um, lots of people have uh, things that, uh, this is the second one I think that we're talking about where we're talking about concentration. So fidget toys enhance con concentration and observation skills. Then utilizing a fidget toy while watching a video will increase a person's ability to recall details from the video that would go unnoticed without the use of a fidget toy. Because higher levels of concentration allow more information to be processed by the brain and later recalled. So this is an interesting thought. It's very difficult science and even a more difficult test, right? So, uh, so here, in order for you to be able to determine the, dis the difference between um, your concentration in a fidget toy and your concentration um, without the fidget toy, uh, you know, you would have to be able to measure it, right? And, and that's very difficult to do. 
And then not only that, but you have to have science behind it. And the, the, the science of levels of concentration allow more information to be processed by the brain. I don't know that that's, you know, real science, right? Uh, it's it's, it's um, observational science, right? Where you see people that they're concentrating, they're able to, to um, learn more, right? Focus more. But, um, but that's, it's, the behavioral science projects are very difficult. And again, we don't recommend them. Any comments? No, it doesn't look like it. Okay, I'll go on. Here's another one. And again, this is just remarkable how many of these we get. If colored paper is added to a learning environment, then one's ability to remember will increase noticeably in any learning scenario because synapses will be sent to the sensory registry store based off the environmental stimuli, in which case, in, in this case, color. And this information is stored here until it has received enough information to be moved to a different part of the brain, the shorter or long-term memory store. Okay, so, um, so this is another behavioral science. And again, we don't recommend them uh, because it's very difficult to have really good data. And, and in order to have a very successful project, you have to have very good data. So, um, so here's, here's that big fuzzy word, increase, right? An ability to remember will increase. Well, that's difficult to measure. First, it's difficult to be able to measure somebody's ability, and then it's even more difficult to, to be able to measure a change in ability, right? From a baseline to the new scenario. And third, I'm not sure that the science is right here too, right? Where you're saying that color uh, affects the way memory works in the brain. So uh, it's, an interesting, it's an interesting topic, but um, again, just to show, you, not, not all hypotheses are good science projects. So here's one I thought was interesting. Example number nine. If pre-made helmets like baseball, hard hats, or bike skateboard helmets provide protection and are made with different materials, paddings, and are shaped differently, which types of helmets provide safe protection of pumpkins when dropped from different heights? So what they're doing is they're gonna drop a pumpkin from a height in, in what would be a helmet and try to um, you know, see if they're protecting the pumpkin. So if, then the helmet provides some protection depending on the height of the drop in the materials, padding, and shapes because the pumpkin in the side of the helmet was or wasn't protected due to the absorption of a force of impact depending on the material of the helmet and the height the helmet was dropped from. Okay, so it, it's an interesting topic, right? Protecting, protecting heads from, from harm. So a couple things. First of all, um, how would you be able to detect harm to the pumpkin? So uh, a pumpkin can fall pretty far, uh, you know, off your counter, uh, you know, certainly not from your second story window, but off your counter without getting much damage. So, um, so uh, um, you know, it wouldn't take, it would be difficult to know that you've provided protection if you are going to use something that has a pretty, uh, firm um, exterior, right? And not only that, but the problem with that you're protecting brains from is, is sloshing, right? So the problem brain injuries happen because uh, of the sloshing around that's going inside of your head, the brain hitting the, uh, the, the skeleton of your, of, your, of your head, right? So, um, so it's a very interesting topic to create um, different things to protect items, but, or protect, you know, uh, people's heads, because it's a very um, uh, important science, right? How to protect people in um, sports, or falls, or bikes, or skateboards, right? Um, but the, so, the, so you would need to have a way of detecting what uh, forces it saw. So you would maybe need to find um, a piezo of some, some way of measuring the impact that it sees when it hits. And so I'm not sure the pumpkin is the right way to do that. I would just figure out a way to measure the, the G force or the, the brunt force that it got when it landed on the ground. But it is an interesting topic. Um, 
and here we are with, and another thing to say about this is that it's difficult to know how to change the helmet. So how do you know if you're changing the helmet, with the change that you're making will improve the protection to whatever you're putting inside it, right? So it's a very good, it's a very interesting topic. Um, we would just need to work on the hypothesis in order to um, make sure that we were able to measure um, uh, the impacts to the, to the whatever it is that you're dropping. It, it, it doesn't have to be something that breaks. It could be just some, a ball that you have your, your, um, your piezo measurement or your way of measuring your force at the bottom and then uh, a way of detecting, uh, uh, a way of creating different protections for the head or for the item inside. So, sorry. It, it's, a, it's a good question, um, but this is not quite a clear hypothesis. Any comments? I'll just keep going then. And another example, here's one, I'd love this. If a students are given less homework, then the grades the student would significantly increase compared to their prior grade, because the more work given over a certain period of time would decrease their sleep since they have to stay up and complete their work task. And as many studies have proven, the less sleep, the grades decrease. <laughs> so this is one of those where, um, somebody has uh, something that they want to prove uh, without any science at the top of it. They're like, I need to prove, I need a scientific experiment to prove that I shouldn't have extra homework. So that's kind of a bias where you're starting off with a not, not um, how can I change something and then measure the change? It's like, how do I prove that this is, that this is the outcome, right? So never ever when you're trying to create a hypothesis, start with the outcome that you want to prove. So that's kind of rule one. Second, this doesn't really test, test what you're saying. So what you're saying is more homework means less sleep. Uh, you know, I don't know, you know, if, if you have, if you get above some level, maybe, right? But so, uh, or if you have lots of activities, sports and stuff like that, then maybe you'll lose sleep. But those aren't actually correlating, right? So homework and sleep don't correlate, so you can't use one to prove the other. So, um, so this is not a good project, okay? Next one, if the humidity and temperature are above 30% and between 60 and 90 degrees, then bread mold will grow, and then it has a list of different types of bread molds, because those are ideal conditions for bread mold growth. So, um, so it looks to me like what they're doing is they're trying to say, keep the humidity the same and change the temperature. And as the temperature increases, the bread mold will grow or the other way around. But what they are doing is they have an independent variable, which is the temperature. Um, and, uh, and it, of course, the problem with this is that it's difficult to keep a constant temperature uh, like 60 to 90 degrees for a long period of time because bread mold is a long time, right? So you would have to uh, have some kind of a heater going all the time for some things. So that's difficult, but it is a good, so it's difficult to do, but it is a good experiment in that you're saying that I'm going to change this and I'm going to be able to measure the bread mold. Now, um, Measuring bread mold is, is an interesting thing. How do you do that, right? So you would have to create like a grid on the top of your bread and say how many squares are filled in with bread mold, right? So you can have a small grid of squares. And if, you know, 15 out of 20 of them are filled up on top of the, out of the bread mold, then you can have numbers, right? You have to be able to create a, um, uh, you know, a scale in order to have data, right? So I had a daughter who, who did a project a long time ago about creating or growing um, uh, algae in Petri dishes. And she used that kind of a thing where she was creating or counting uh, the squares in a grid to say how much it had grown. And so that's a great way to create data. Here's another one. And this one's a force one, so it's good. If the electromagnetic, if the electromagnet and niodine uh, magnet poles repel each other at one side 
and the other side pulls against each other, then the two magnetic forces will be pushing and pulling in the same direction to become a big force that will propel a battery train car. So what they're saying is if you have different magnets, right, and, and you put them so that they're working together, as opposed to working um, opposite of each other, then the battery is sandwiched between the two, it'll become an electromagnet with the two magnets because the electric current is flowing through a copper coil. And this is a very interesting project. Um, and so what you're doing is you're trying to figure out how to add different magnets to, like, uh, to create something like a train car. Okay, so that would be a very interesting project. I didn't count right, 13 to 14. Okay, so if there are two quarters, here's one. If there are two quarters and one nickel placed next to each other and the coins are ra randomly heads or tails, then a human being tested will choose the quarter that is heads up because there is a concept in society that heads is better than tails and the concept that the quarter is worth more than the nickel. Okay, so this is another behavioral science project. Um, and, uh, and these are very difficult to produce good data. So I don't recommend them, but I just get, uh, you know, we get 40% of our projects first time through our behavioral science questions. And, and then, um, and, this, and then it's, it's not that it's not an interesting question, whether who would choose a quarter over a nickel and whether people choose heads up over tails up, but there's no, no, no um, science to it. There's, uh, you know, um, there's, uh, you know, you know, concepts like, like that. People think that, well, if because of that, pick up, if you see a penny, pick it up all day long, you'll have good luck, right? If it's heads, but you won't pick it up, it's tails, right? So there's these things in the back of our head that make us choose heads over tails. And so it's an interesting behavioral science project, but it is very difficult to, um, to throw away, uh, to, to keep the data constant or clean uh, as a fair test. And so it's just not a good project, behavioral project, or just not good ideas most of the time. Although, let me say this, because I have said that lots and I've gotten in trouble with behavioral science professionals who would come up to me afterwards and say, why are you discouraging kids away from behavioral science projects? And, and I did come across one that's good and I'll tell you that one. Um, uh, there was this project where they had a bowl of candies on a table in the middle of a, a, um, uh, a, a mall. And they had a sign that said, take one. And so what they did was they put that out there and then they watched people and took notes as to whether they took one or took two or took five or took 10 or the whole thing dumped in their purse, right? Um, so, uh, so, and then they did the second time through, they put a mirror there and their, and their philosophy was that if they're watching themselves take more than one, that they would be more apt to be honest about it and only take one. And I thought that was interesting and the data was interesting and, um, uh, for a behavioral science project. So not all behavioral science projects are bad, but those that um, are used to, to um, test uh, attention and focus and those kinds of things are usually not very good. Okay, the next one. If milk curdles when we add any of citruses, uh, citruses, I guess it's probably uh, any juice from a citrus, including lemon, lime, oranges, and others, then the pH of the acid from the citrus is lower than that of the milk then the lower the pH of the solution we add milk to will cause it to separate and thus curdle. And the larger the difference in pH of the solution and that of the milk, the faster it will curdle. Because the difference in the pH values, the milk curdles is caused by the difference uh, in the pH values. The molecules of the milk are either attracted to or repelled by the acidity of the ad added solution. So there's a little science in there um, and that's good. You have to have a little bit of science. So, so what you're going to have to do is you're going to have to have a way of measuring the pH so that you can say that the pH of uh, these different fruits are, are different, right? So you're changing the pH and then you're hoping that it will curdle the milk in different ways. So you have to be able to, um, 
to measure the pH in such a way that you can distinguish the pH values of lemon, lime, and orange juice. So that's important. Um, so you would have, would, you have to make sure that you can do that before you do the project. And then you would have to be able to identify how to um, time the curdle, because you are saying faster, right? It will curdle faster, right? So, um, so that's, again, a kind of a, um, a nebulous term, right? It's kind of a, so you have to be able to identify how to time, how to say when it starts and when it stops curdling. Um, but otherwise, it's a pretty interesting project, right? And then you have science to learn about when it comes to pH levels. pH levels is like, um, is like forces in, in the other projects where it's always easy to do a project with forces. It's pretty easy to do projects with pH levels as long as you can differentiate, of course, between your independent variables. Okay, just, a, just two more, and then we'll go to um, uh, questions and um, uh, engineering design projects. So example 16, if the length or thickness of an arch is increased while keeping all other various constant, the span, materials, and temperature, then the arch strength will increase, but not in a perfect ratio. Because the downward force of any weight is carried along the arch to its supports, the arch experiences collection, compression along the top and tension on to, or bottom and tension on the top. Now this is an excellent, um, right? So it's talking about changing either the length or the thickness of an arch. You'd have to only increase one um, and keeping all other things constant and then measuring um, the strength. And I'm sure you would have to do that by adding a weight. Uh, so yeah. it's carried along the arch to its supports. So that's an interesting project. You would have to have a couple different arches, but well stated. That's a good hypothesis. Last one. If the viscosity of a liquid is changed that which the sand is mixed is high, then the settling time of sand will be longer because Stroke's Law. These were all, by the way, uh, turned into me from the beginning uh, of projects in 2017. So here what they're saying is if you have a viscosity of a liquid like milk compared to water, right, and you mix sand in it, and then you measure the settling time of the sand, it will be longer because why? Stroke's law. Well, so that's an interesting project except for the because is not good enough. You will have to explain what Stroke's law is and what the science is behind that so that you can better explain why the settling time in a highly viscous liquid changes. But otherwise, it's a good, good hypothesis. Oh, I think I have one more, sorry. If towers built with triangle bracing, then will hold the most vertical load because it increases the compression strength of columns. So this is one where you have to know a little bit about bridges um, and you're using triangular bracing and stuff like that. But again, it's much like the other ones where forces is always a good project, just like pH is normally a good project as long as you have your independent variable specified, your dependent variable, and a way of measuring it. So any comments about hypotheses and how to uh, 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 decide if you have a good hypothesis, if you're actually testing your data, and if you um, have a good independent variable, a good dependent variable, you're able to measure them, you hold everything constant, and, uh, and your because actually tests the, the, the science principle that, between, that explains the relationship between your dependent and independent variable, right? Any comments, questions? Okay, I'll go on to engineering design. Now, remember engineering design the format of an engineering design is that you have to have a product, a user, and a functionality, right? So in order to describe what a, what, um, what, uh, uh, a product is. So here's some examples, and most of them are pretty good. Pro engineering products aren't as hard to come up with as a, as a hypothesis because you're not really testing a, um, uh, a, a, a um, you're not really testing a theory in science, right? You're not really testing something in science. You're just creating something new and trying to determine if it works, right? So for example, here's one product, a mouth guard that can record the impact, the hit you sustain, as well as if you have a concussion. 
and the user is athletes, and the functionality is you must be able to display the severity of the hit. So the math guard, something to record the impact. So this is a really good idea. Um, of course, you're not, it's not really um, specified how you're going to measure the force of the impact, but I would, I would guess that um, a mouth guard would be a great place to do it since, um, uh, uh, you know, there's, um, your jaw is moving and you're, you can create, you can measure the impact. So this is a very interesting project and a good, good project, right? Example number two. A system to convert kinetic energy from drain water and convert it to electric energy is a new sustainable energy source. A user is, is somebody looking for green energy. Um, and the functionality is you'll have to create electricity. Well, that's, <laughs> that's, the, uh, that's uh, the rub, I guess, is what you'd say. Uh, the materials electric generator. So, so it's always good to do a project in, in green energy. Those are highly looked upon quite highly um, by judges. Um, and finding ways to create new energy um, is, uh, is, always, is always good. So good luck to you. Number three, product. An alternative to a plastic dog cone. So this is a good one, huh? Users, dogs with a need of a cone could be sold to veterans, vet or veterinarians, sorry. The functionality is allow dogs more mobility, keep them safer from biting their surgical incisions, and decrease incidence of household mobility accidents. Um, so, so yes, um, of course, you know, there's some possible materials, but everybody knows that the current dog cone thing doesn't work well, or animal cone thing, it, it um, you know, it, it needs some good, good thinking around it. And uh, so this is an excellent idea and it would be interesting to see what they come up with. Number four, an automatic cat feeder. So uh, this person had two cats in specific that they were interested in making this for, but to cat food, feed the cats <clears throat> while owners are on vacation. <clears throat> and this is one of those things where you would have to have, uh, you know, like it says, a programmable timer, a power cord, um, so there's lots of interesting things that you would have to put together for this, but it's a good, a good, interesting project. Okay. Number five, product. A cheap, effective way to filter water made with materials strictly found around the house. And the user would be for clean water in emergencies um, and cheap water for third world countries. So it's always good to have um, ideas to come up with uh, around water around energy, around clean energy, around environmental. These are all good things to study. So the functionality, the product must be able to intake water and filter it and dispense clean water. And there's, um, you know, lots of um, uh, things you could use, charcoal, sand, gravel, lots of things to filter it in. And you would just need to be able to filter your water and test and to show that you can do that. So sounds like a good project. I mean, number six, any comments so far? Um, here's another one, product, supplementary product for the medical walking boot. Now this is an interesting one, right? So these are people that are coming, they see things in their world and they think, you know, I should, they, you know, they had probably a dog that came home from surgery and watched him knock things over with the dog cone. And he's like, you know, I can, should make something better. And here's one like that, right? A product where you, they probably had somebody in their house that had a medical boot and it made it so that they had an injury on their, on their non-injured leg. Um, so this is very interesting. So the product is supplementary product for medical walking boot. Users with, uh, for those with ankle or lower leg injuries who have been prescribed a medical boot. And the functionality is support for the other non-injured leg to reduce the negative effects of the, walk, of the medical walking boot. So that's a very interesting problem. And, um, it's so materials such as rubber and other shock absorbent building components and a camera to photograph and document our progress. So that's um, an, interesting, an interesting idea. Number seven, the end product will be a device to hold a dog's toy steady as they chew or play with it. So anyone who owns a dog that is constantly comes, in, comes to their owner with their toy while their owner is busy. So functionality means it must be able to withstand tugging, pawing, and biting to hold the toy so that the dog stays occupied for an extended period of time. <laughs> so that's a, that's a good, good, um, a good project, you know, looked around, found that there was a need 
and um, created a project for it. Number eight, product. The product will be an environmentally friendly insulated sitting mat with the intended purpose of elevating the user off the ground. The product should provide the homeless with a warm and water repellent surface to sit on as opposed to the ground so it can be used by victims of natural disasters who have been rendered homeless. This product can also be used for outdoor events such as concerts. So this is another one of those um, items where somebody looked around and they saw a need, right? So they had a need. They thought, you know, I need to be able to create something that fixes this. So this is truly the innovation process and the functionality is the product must be water repellent, environmentally friendly, and must also have the ability to retain and maintain heat to keep the user warm. And so they'll be researching all the, all the materials needed for that. That's an interesting project. And that's how a lot of cool engineering design projects happen, is by looking around, seeing a need, and, um, and putting something together. Now here's, I think this is my last one maybe. Yeah. Number nine, the product is a safety sleeper when used correctly it will decrease the percentage of deaths of babies from SIDS, the sudden infant death syndrome. And the use, so it's a safety sleeper includes babies, for, it's for babies between the ages of zero and 12 months. And will, um, and this design device will also be involving parents of infants. So the functionality of this product will provide parents an alarm when their infant child stops breathing after a short or certain amount of time, thus decreasing the amount of baby infant deaths. So let's, an excellent idea, a product that need that um, you know. There's probably several people who have worked on items like this, but um, it's definitely uh, you know, look around, you see a need, and so you create a project. So, um, is there any, any anybody, Jocelyn? Would you do you have? Oh, you said you don't have a hypothesis. Did you have any comments that you would like to make about um, uh, about the? Um, process of creating a hypothesis or a design project? No? Okay. Well, that's all I've got. Um, and I guess in, uh, in two weeks, we'll go through some, um, some examples of some research projects to help uh, folks prepare for um, creating the research project uh, for the forms. We'll have okay. to talk about the forms. Okay. All right. Sounds great. Thanks a lot, Sheila. Sure. Bye-bye. Bye now.